interesting COVID times. I would much rather see all of your faces in person. And I mean, actually, since we're a webinar, I can't see any of your faces. So please bear with us as we present to basically empty screens. <laughs> um, but we hope to just be giving you very useful information that will help your students be successful um, with us at STEM next year. So first we'll start with some introductions and then we will jump into the information that you're all here to learn about, um, about joining STEM or either you're joining STEM for the first time or you're moving, your student is moving up a level. So we're kind of covering both of those situations um, at once tonight. So you, you may have a current STEM student that is either moving from elementary to middle school or middle school to high school, um, or you're a brand new STEM family. So um, there's lots of information, great information that we're gonna give tonight. We have a great team here to help answer any questions that may arise. Um, but first, before I talk too much, let's do introductions. So I'm Liz Dugan, I'm the K-12 head of school here at STEM. And we also have Anna Magley Haberach with us tonight. She is our secondary director. And then we have our great counseling team with us here tonight. Let's start with Alexa. Hi, I'm Alexa Nichols. I am one of the um, high school counselors right now with letters, last names, letters A through K. Alyssa. Alyssa Woodward, the other high school counselor. And I have the last half of the alphabet this year, so that's um, L through Z. Colleen. Hi, I'm Colleen Sullivan. I am one of the middle school counselors, last names A through L. Vicki. Hi, I'm Vicki Dix. Thank you for coming tonight. I'm the other middle school counselor and my alphabet is M through Z. And Jessica. Hi, I'm Jessica Connolly. I help high school students go off campus for CE classes and internships and mentorships. Awesome. All right, and we will all present our own kind of things that we oversee tonight. And um, if you wouldn't mind, try to hold your questions for the end because most of your burning questions we will answer, answer throughout the presentation tonight. And if um, for some reason we don't get to your question at the end or if you ask a question throughout the presentation and we miss it, um, please just send us an email. Our, all of our contact information will be on the last slide. And so we promise we're not meaning to ignore anyone. If you have a question that doesn't get answered, just. Send, us, send it to us via email and we'll get to it as soon as possible. So, all right, let's get started. So we are STEM School Highlands Ranch. We are home of the Spartans. We are a public charter school in Douglas County as I'm sure you're all aware. <laughs> and um, our agenda for tonight is we will give some overview of STEM as a whole. We'll go through the typical school day and class schedule of our secondary students. We'll go through some teacher expectations tips for success, um, support staff for students for when students start to maybe struggle. So uh, different avenues for them to seek support. Um, we'll cover some of our extracurriculars and clubs and um, graduation requirements uh, is a big one. And then we'll also go over some college and career prep as well. All right, so some general information about STEM. So our mission is that we never stop innovating. Our vision is that we envision a world of exponential possibilities where every child develops the innate knowledge, skills, creativity, and character to thrive, lead, and succeed in an ever-changing future. And our goal is that, not, is that we not only prepare students to thrive in the constant world of reinvention, but that they step up and lead it, lead that change as well. So currently we have over 1,700 students. We're sitting about 1,760, I believe this year and looking to be about 1,775 next year as a whole K-12. And the breakdown is that we have about 500 students in our elementary school and then 1,200 in our secondary. So you can see that our secondary school is um, rather large. And then um, this slide kind of goes over what, who we are and what we believe. So, you know, as our mission states, we believe in innovation above all else and solving real world problems in every single one of our classes. We also um, believe in having a rigorous education for every student and that, you know, how you define rigor can, de can depend based on each individual student's level. So we do um, our best to meet every student where they are so that we're challenging that each individual student um, to make sure they're learning and growing during their time at STEM with us. 
We are very student-centered. Um, one of my favorite things about STEM, and I, this is my seventh year here at STEM, one of my favorite things about going into classrooms is seeing students doing the work. You will hardly ever find a teacher at the front of a classroom lecturing to quiet, obedient children. It's, it's loud, it's messy, and it's awesome because our students are active and learning hands-on versus being passive learners. We absolutely believe in the unlimited potential of students as well. Like I mentioned earlier with figuring out the individual level of each kid in each classroom so that we can challenge them appropriately and make sure that each student is learning whether they're low in one area or super high in one area. It's our job to figure out how to challenge each student. And then we do have our formula for character. So we believe in raising not only intelligent, successful students, but also kind and amazing human beings. So we believe in teaching our students integrity, empathy, responsibility, respect, and honesty. And we do have, um, you know, we address situations with students when they're not living up to our formula for character. And so we take each individual situation and um, use it as a teaching moment for students to help like, grow them into awesome, human beings as well and kind so all right and now i will hand it over to Alyssa, one of our high school counselors uh so at stem the secondary so grades six through 12 run on a block schedule um except for fridays so mondays and wednesdays it's uh our blue days and students will have their even periods on those on those days. So periods two, four, six, and eight. Tuesdays and Thursdays is gold days. Um, they'll have their odd periods on those days, three, five, seven, and nine. Friday is what we call a skinny schedule, which means they have all of their periods. So periods two through nine. Um, that is new as of next year. So that is not how we um, are doing it this year, but we'll start it next year. Um, every middle schooler and ninth grader are required to take a study hall. It's one of their class periods, so they'll have it every other day. Um, 10th through 12th graders have the option to have a study hall. Lunch is daily during um, sixth hour on blue days and seventh hour on gold days. And um, it's broken up into A, B, and C lunches. So each student will go at the same time as their, their whole class. Um, when your student needs help with something, they have um, lots of resources. Um, us counselors are available as much as we can be. Um, so they can either walk down to our offices or email us. Um, teachers also offer office hours um, and those are usually posted on their Canvas home pages. Um, and that's gr a great time for one-on-one -on -one help. Um, students can get help from their study hall teachers. Um, study hall teachers are great for um, keeping them on task, keeping them organized, um, working out like a catch up plan if a student needs to catch up on some stuff. Um, and then we do offer some after school tutoring. Um, we couldn't do as much as we wanted to um, this year because of COVID stuff, but we're hoping to have more opportunities for students um, next year. This is an example of um, what a student schedule looks like. Each student will be able to view their schedule on Infinite Campus. Um, it does list all periods and both semesters. Um, oh, and we encourage students to um, print this out and keep, them with, keep it with them for the first week or two, just so they know where they're going. Um, we do schedule changes within the first 10 days of school um, and schedules have not been created yet for next year. So that's why your student is not 100% sure on what they're taking next year. Um, we can generally get those out at least a couple days before school starts. We have all of our calendars and bell schedules um, on our website, stemk12.org. And we also encourage students to print these out and keep them with them so that they can refer to them throughout the year. And now I'm gonna hand it over to Vicki, one of the middle school counselors. Hi, I'm Vicki. 
And I just want to go over that so you'll know and that your student will know what the teacher's expectations of each of the students in their classroom. Obviously, the first one is to um, help students to, to be there, to be prepared, be on time, um, come with the materials they need for that class. Um, and the next biggest thing is Canvas. Um, we use Canvas in middle school and in high school. And Canvas, if they're not familiar with it, they'll get familiar with it real quick. So it becomes automatic for them. Parents will also be able to access Canvas to watch your students progress. But they do want to check on that regularly um, because that's where they go in. They can see all their assignments that are posted. They can see their grades that are going to be posted there. If they have any missing or late assignments, those will be posted there as well. So that's why it's a good resource for both students and parents. We always encourage students to start learning in middle school um, to, to be good advocates for themselves. This is a school that's definitely need, a skill that's definitely needed in high school. But we start in middle school to teach them because it's a little skill that's definitely out of the box for a lot of them. And the quicker they learn that, the more successful they will be. This is particularly true for high school. They don't earn credit so much in middle school. They do have requirements, but they don't have credits. In high school, when um, Alyssa or Alexa is going to talk to you more about that soon, but students want to learn how to track their graduation credits when you're in high school. Again, Canvas is good, so they look at their grades. If they know they're going to be out or if they're out for illness or if they're out for vacation or something like that, they want to find out right away from the teachers how you go in and make up a grade. So if they're out sick or out on vacation, they're still going to be responsible for the material that's learned in that class. Office hours is something as a counselor, I strongly, strongly, strongly encourage students to do starting in middle school. When they attend office hours, that's their time. As Alyssa mentioned, they can have that one-on-one -on -one time with teachers to ask questions, to show them the work that they're working on. And that's where they can get that one-on-one -on -one assistance from the teacher. And that communication between your student and the teacher is so valuable. And in school, they want them to, the teachers want them to be engaged, to be there to obviously goes without saying to do their work, turn it in on time. Um, and if they can't to again, communicate with that teacher. Then above all is for them to take care of themselves um, so that they're managing their own stress, their own anxiety, so they can give full percent, 100% to their school. Next slide. Thank you. And some tips for your student is to be aware of themselves. Again, to keep track of their own credits for high school and but also through middle school is how they're progressing in their class through the semester. Again, to attend the class, to so watch their attendance, to be motivated. And kids probably need a lot of help from parents and their teachers and counselors is to stay motivated, especially when things are getting tough. They wanna to stay motivated because it's real important for them to try to stay on top of their work because um, it's so quickly to get behind and that's when kids become really stressed is when they're starting to get behind. Again, those office hours and that communication with the teacher will help them deal with the stress and help them stay up. Um, daily homework completion, if they want to try and do that. And I always recommend kids that they start their homework that's assigned that day, they start it that day, they don't put it off. Because if you put it off, then you get more stressed. Problem solving and planning ahead. Again, this is going to be through Canvas. Canvas has a lot of um, tools within it for kids to learn how to organize themselves and stay on top of it. We always recommend that students learn to use planners and that anymore these days that can be a hard copy planner where they can do the traditional things um, where they write in it. A lot of kids these days will use electronic planners. They can create that themselves if they want. And a lot of kids are just using their phones as alerts to help them remember. But I always recommend for students to be using a planner and try not to put it all in memory, especially in high school, because they're going to be so busy in high school. They try to think of it and remember it, they're likely going to forget. So it's real important if you can help your student, whether they're in sixth grade or whether they're going to be a senior, to help them learn how to organize themselves through a planner. The support team, again, as Alyssa mentioned, we have a lot of people here to support your students. Um, and you're going to meet all, most all of these people tonight. Um, but besides the people that we, you'll be meeting tonight, we do have social workers, a social worker for middle school and a social worker for high school. And we also have our college and um, career counselor that's going to be working with this, your, your seniors. And then we also have a school psychologist. So we're all here 
to support your student. Again, Canvas is again a real important thing for you and your students to be very familiar with and going through and learning Canvas and learning the different tools of how to organize and prioritize their work. There's definitely some tutor links, which I recommend that you use and your student use to go in and to start as soon as they can to start going through that and starting getting familiar with it. And then as a counselor, I always recommend um, students to balance their academic load with extracurricular activities. So you'll find these activities offered on our website. It's under the enrichment offerings page. And these are some of the um, activities that we have this year. So this may change for next year, but I always encourage students to be a part, to get involved, to try something new if they want. Um, because it helps them with peer relationships. It can help them with some faculty relationships because every, every activity has um, a, an adult mentor. And again, I've always experienced that the more often kids are involved in extracurricular activities, it definitely helps them to be better managers of their time if they're you know, both learning academics and as well as being involved with extracurriculars. It forces them to learn how to be um, good managers at their time. And now I'm going to pass this on to Colleen. Great, thank you. Um, so we're going to spend all the time right now just talking about middle school specifically. Um, and so many of you are already familiar with this, but I'm just going to go over it real quick anyway. At the middle school level in grades six, seven, and eight, all of our students take science, math, social studies, and language arts. Those are our required core classes. And those are full year classes. Students are also required to take engineering and computer science. Okay, in sixth grade, uh, students take sixth grade computer science. In seventh grade, they take seventh grade computer science. And in eighth grade, they have a choice between networking and cybersecurity or PIs and Pythons. Um, in terms of engineering, sixth, seventh, and eighth graders have the option of either taking engineering or middle school robotics. And then seventh and eighth graders also have the option of taking TSA. The difference between TSA and the other engineering courses is TSA is a full year class as opposed to the other two that are semester long classes. TSA also prepares students to take part in state competitions second half of the year. So that's another main difference as well. Oops, sorry. Um, we also have electives for our middle schoolers. They will take three electives per semester. Um, and then I'm not going to go through all of them right here, but they're listed and many of you have already chosen your classes for next year. Um, but these are what we are offering in terms of electives, anything from world language to psychology to scientific methods and theater. Um, I highlighted math enrichment and English enrichment because I just wanted to um, lets you know that those two classes are enrichment classes. They are supplemental classes for students who may find um, English or math challenging. So students who may have some deficits in those two areas. These are supplemental math classes that support what's happening in the classroom. So I just wanted to make that clear. Um, we do have an academic planning guide on our website and it's linked at the bottom of this slide. Um, so I would encourage you to look at that academic planning guide ton of information, but it also has course descriptions um, for each one of the classes that we offer as well. And again, this information will be shared out um, probably tomorrow, so you can always go back and reference this information. This is the middle school pro course progression. These are our core um, classes that we offer. For language arts, science, and social studies, we, we offer a traditional class, and then we also offer an accelerated course in each one of those areas. Both of those classes cover the same material. The accelerated courses, however, may move at a quicker pace. They may um, cover some um, content in a little bit more detail. Um, grading expectations may be a little bit higher and responsibilities may be a little bit higher as well. But we offer accelerated classes in each one of those um, three areas. In terms of math, your student will be placed in a math class based on his or her ability. Many of you have already provided standardized test scores, which are helping with math placement. Um, those of you who have not provided test scores um, will be asked to come in and take a math placement exam. And we'll talk about that here in just a few minutes. 
Um, but again, your child will be placed in the math class appropriate for them. And then just another continuation with the progression for computer science engineering and our electives. Okay. Um, as I said, math placement, current fifth grade students um, that are at STEM, their teachers are recommending um, what math class they take next year. So those of you who are currently at STEM for fifth grade, if you have any questions or concerns about what math class your student will be in next year, have those conversations with the teacher now so that you're aware of what that recommendation is. Incoming sixth graders who are going to be new to STEM and incoming um, I'm sorry, new to STEM sixth, seventh, eighth, or ninth graders, um, we will ask for those standardized test scores. So either MAPS, iReady, or STAR. Um, if we don't have those, um, we are asking that you guys come in for a math placement exam on either May 5th or May 13th. And that information went out, I believe, either yesterday or this morning. And I know we've already had quite a few people sign up for that. So thank you very much. But that will help us make math placement as well. And now I'm gonna pass this on to Alexa. All right, I'm gonna spend just a little bit of time talking about high school. Again, it's kind of a review from other meetings that we've had, so I won't spend too terribly long on it, but I did wanna provide our high school or our secondary um, website link here on this slide that you can look at later. I think it's really helpful uh, to bookmark that. It's, all of our news is on there. You can find just about anything on our website, but it can be kind of hard to find sometimes. So I do have that for you there. I'll have you move the slide, please. <laughs> all right, so graduation requirements. The big thing is you move towards um, into high school and out of middle school. All of STEM's graduation requirements do meet Douglas County. They are just slightly different. Um, so you'll see that all students will earn 24 credits in order to graduate. And you'll see underneath that 24 credits that each student will earn a specific amount in each subject area. So you've got your core classes, English, math, science, social studies. It should be noted on social studies that um, every student in the state of Colorado must take US government. Um, that's usually taken as a freshman. And that's where, um, that's the only class that is specific uh, within the high school graduation requirements. STEM also asks that students have one credit in fine arts, one credit in PE or health, two and a half in general electives, two credits of a world language. Those do have to be the same language. And then three credits in STEM electives. In addition to taking passing classes and earning credits, students also need to complete 20 hours of community service. They need to work through their ICAP or their individual career and academic plan. Um, that starts in seventh grade actually. So that just continues through until they are seniors. And then they also are being asked to show graduation competencies, which is on my next slide. I will, or it's in two slides, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I will explain that in just a minute. Now we can switch. Our STEM scholar distinction at graduation takes those graduation requirements and just um, ups the ante, I guess, a little bit. Students will receive or earn 30 credits and it is between different areas. So I believe that they would earn seven in STEM credits and four in, um, I don't know why I'm blanking on the um, STEM electives. Ms. Woodward, is it four? Yes. Yeah, I think that's the <laughs> thing. <laughs> uh, but everything else is the same within your regular core arts world world language. It is just where STEM and general electives are a little bit higher. Um, to be a STEM scholar, you also will have a 3.5 GPA or higher. That's either weighted or unweighted, whichever is higher. Students will take at least a minimum of two AP or CE courses and complete 100 hours of community service. So that's something that a lot of students strive for. Um, we obviously don't know who gets that until the end of their senior year, but um, we help plan that as well with students and have that conversation as we move through high school and course selection. Now we're at our graduation requirement and our competencies. So this can be kind of tricky to explain. Um, basically the state would like to see their graduates be able to 
um, use math and English either in the workplace or in a post-secondary institution. Um, and this is the list here by which they can prove those things in both math and English. Students do not have to meet every single one of those boxes. They just need to complete one within the English column and one within the math. I typically like to talk about how our STEM students do that. Um, that is most likely through their SAT scores. So that score would be a 470 in English and a 500 in math. Um, at STEM students take PSAT um, usually in the fall and then they take it again in, in the spring as their state assessment. So it is kind of fun to watch those scores climb and just see how that plays out as they go through high school. Um, another way our STEM students meet that is through taking a AP or a CE course. Um, if you take a CE course, which is a college course within the math or English um, subject areas, they would just need to receive a passing grade there, so a C or above. And then for the AP, it's again, an um, AP math or English course, getting a two or above on those tests. And I will go ahead on that one, thanks. Uh, STEM offers, I've said a few times, concurrent enrollment and du dual enrollment options. I'm not going to spend too much time in here because the lovely Ms. Connolly is going to talk here in a second about it all. Um, but those are just courses offered through STEM, uh, working with ACC, Red Rocks, Metro, and CU Denver. And they also play into our P-TECH program, which Ms. Connolly will explain to you in one second. Um, she is the master of it all, so I will handle, hand it over to her. Hi. Um, so, um, just to touch on uh, concurrent enrollment just a little bit, concurrent enrollment and dual enrollment allows students to take classes both at STEM and off campus at a college partner such as CU Denver or Arapahoe Community College and earn both high school credit and college credit. Students can begin taking CE classes at STEM as early as freshman year and they can go off campus for one half or for all of their courses as early as sophomore year. So CareerWise is a program where students can earn a wage and high school credits while receiving hands-on work experience. We currently have students working for companies such as Lockheed Martin and Frontier Airlines. It is a three-year commitment. Um, career mentor, STEM's Career Mentorship Program pairs students in grades 10 through 12 with an adult mentor in a field of their choice. Students will spend 15 hours over the course of a semester following and learning from their mentor more about the career field of their interest. Career discovery events are events designed to help guide students in their career discovery by bringing industry experts into the school for demonstrations and presentations. Of course, if COVID allows this year, hopefully we can amp that up a little bit. Um, upon admission to STEM's internship program, students will be placed in a competitive career internship, internship in a field of their choosing. Students will complete 75 hours of work time with their interning company. Currently, we have students interning with Littleton Adventist Hospital, Visa, and Lockheed Martin. Our P-TECH program at STEM is continuing to grow. We have, continue, we have currently 50 plus students in the P-TECH program. Let me find my other thing here. Um, so P-TECH prepares students for a meaningful high-end, high-pay career with a focus on technology. In our current P-TECH program, students receive an, associate, an Associates of Applied Science degree in mechatronics with no tuition costs to the family. Students can begin the program in ninth grade and continue into years 13 and 14 if needed. You can go on to the next slide. So as a as a freshman, um, students along with their counselors will begin laying the framework for their high school career. One way they do that is through Naviance and ICAP. Um, Ms. Nichols touched on ICAP there. Um, they begin in seventh grade and they continue through senior year. Students will do things like develop a career interest profile, explore their strengths and take a college match quiz. Uh, we also offer individualized course planning where we sit down with the students um, and we plan out their high school classes and most particularly their CE classes. 
Um, our college and career counselor um, is Ms. Lytle and her email is there. She also has her own website um, that's linked on STEM's website that has lots of information about um, specific colleges and general um, college questions and um, pathways to get to the college you want. Um, there's my email. I'm the career discovery coordinator. Um, if your student is interested in going off campus, they can send me an email and then I'll take it from there. Also for internships and mentorships also. All right, I will take this slide. Um, so in addition to being the secondary director at STEM, I'm also our athletic director. Um, so this is for students in grades nine through 12. So our high school students. Um, STEM has recently been voted um, unanimously in by CHASA to join the Colorado High School um, Activities and Athletics Association. So um, this means that we're going to compete in a league um, for league championships. We offer a variety of sports and we're always open to student interest and in gaining those sports. Now, these seasons are um, assuming that COVID will not throw our seasons for a loop again, um, like they did this year. But in the fall, we do offer co-ed cross country golf, um, girls volleyball. Um, oh, we have golf on there twice. Um, Sorry about that. And boys soccer. Um, so all those sports start competing like as soon as school starts in the fall and compete kind of through um, when the cold weather comes. And we are on the Chassa um, seasons for those. In the winter, we have boys basketball and we are hoping to start a girls basketball team this year. We had some interest this season, but not quite enough for a full team. Um, so hoping to start that up. And in the spring right now, we have boys lacrosse, girls soccer and co-ed track and field. Um, we also have cheerleading as a year round, um, cheerleading and spirit as a year round sport. Um, so that's kind of how, um, those are some of our varsity athletics and our students have the ability to compete in those. Um, we had close to hundred athletes come out last year. Um, this year, our numbers have been a little bit lower with COVID, but it's um, a great addition into um, all of our amazing academics is that our students can also build the amazing camaraderie. You can see our girls volleyball team on this slide um, and have an opportunity to um, engage in those athletics as well. One of our lacrosse players said at a board meeting last year, um, you know, we're more than just geniuses at STEM, which um, I loved as his sentiment for why um, our athletics should also be important at our school. Um, if anyone has any questions about um, those varsity sports, um, my email will be on the last slide and you're welcome to reach out. So this is all of our contact information. If we didn't get to a question um, tonight that was typed in the chat or the question and answer box, um, feel free to email one of us um, and we will get back to you as soon as we can. Thank you all for coming tonight. Um, we are excited to meet you and your students next year. <laughs>